Everything that rocks, Red 96.7. And on the phone with me right now, I have professional wrestlers Ken Anderson and Sean Davari and Rev Warriors. If you know your wrestling history, you know Ken Anderson was Mr. Kennedy back in WWE. He was also Mr. Anderson in TNA. And Sean Davari was Davari in WWE, as well as Sheikh Abdul Bashir in TNA. And they are now the owners of the Academy, the School of Professional Wrestling, down in Minneapolis. And guys, I'm just going to jump right into it. What made you two decide to team up together to create the Academy? Well, Sean and I have known each other for about 17 years. We've been best friends, and we've been through everything together. I mean, we, we used to drive five, six, 15 hours in cars to get to Nashville to wrestle and then go to Minneapolis and then from Minneapolis to Green Bay and then down to Milwaukee. And we both made it to the WWE. We were in TNA, AAA. Um, we wrestled in Japan, all over the world. And, you know, for me personally, I'm 40 years old. I'm starting to get to the point in my life where I want to stop falling down as much. And I want to teach other people how to fall down for a living. <laughs> We and Ken have like super parallel careers, so like a, the you know worldwide audience like really doesn't know how you know they don't know about our relationship and our friendship over the last seventeen years we've been on the job. But, but it's been almost like like literally like the second I would get somewhere, Ken would follow, or the second Ken would get somewhere, I would follow. Like uh, literally within a matter of twelve months, almost always. Like I would get the WWE and Ken got the WWE and then TNA and Ken the TNA and then like coming up this little independent promotion Ken would get into and then he'd be like, Hey, you should look at this kid Sean and then I would get in there. So we were always like right by each other parallel the whole way, just never on the other side of the camera. You guys aren't just the owners of the academy, you're the head trainers also. So you're dealing with both the business side and the teaching of the next generation of wrestlers. Why did you guys decide to take on both roles? I, I was gonna say too like Part of the reason why we're such good friends and why we decided to go into business together and do this is because we, we both think a lot alike. We've always seen the way that professional wrestling schools train their kids. They start out beating the crap out of them for a couple of weeks, and half the people just drop off. You know, They make them squat until they puke. They make them do push-ups. They make them roll. They, they bump, 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 bump. They make them fall down a lot. We've always said, like, we think that's stupid. And we think that, say, a 350-pound guy comes through our doors, doesn't have what appears to be an athletic bone in his body, but he loves the professional wrestling business and feels like he has something that he can contribute. Well, just because he can't bump 200 times in a day, just because he can't do a 1,000 squats, I'm not going to tell him, like, hey, man, your dreams are over. You can't do this. No, we want to tell him there are so much different stuff for a person to contribute in the wrestling business. You can be a manager, you can be a valet, you can be a commentator, whatever it is. We want to help that person. No, I think the success is in the eye of the beholder. It, it, it's where we're, me and Ken have always been very goal oriented in that. What is it that you want to do? We're not going to. We're not going to tell you what your dream is, and we're not going to tell you what success is. But we would like to ask you what you feel success is, or we'd like to ask you what your dream is. And based on whatever that answer is, say it's to be a commentator, say it's the ring announcer, say it's to be a cameraman, whatever, like we're going to do everything in our power to help you achieve that. You know, no one ever goes to like college and says, hey, I want to be a doctor. And they say, no, you're going to be a lawyer. Like, no, they, they help you facilitate whatever it is that you want to do. And that, that's kind of, like Ken said earlier, why I think we get along so well. Is, is we're pretty open-minded in, in, in our industry about that. But in life, we don't believe to get to L.A. to New York, there's only one way to do it. You can go through the middle of the country. You can go the northern route. You can go the scenic route to the south. You can you know, go this way. You can go that way. Like, we just want to get you to New York. And that's a pun. I don't actually mean like New York is in WWE. <laughs> no, I got that one. And the Academy isn't just for guys. You've got one of my favorite female wrestlers, Molly Holly, as the head teacher for the ladies. Uh, was Molly your first pick on leading the ladies in the Academy, or did she hear that you guys were doing this and offered to help? Molly's been, like, my friend for years, and um, it's actually one of those things that when she was done with wrestling, she was done with wrestling. She has she really had no desire to be a part of it. Like, WWE calls her back to do, like, interviews with the network, and she did a couple things like WrestleMania for, like, the girl battle royal or whatever. But, like, for the most part, she's done with wrestling, and she was content with it. And she actually came up to me when we started kicking the idea around, saying that, hey, I want to help out again. And, and it's an awesome, 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 super fortunate thing for the girls. But for the guys, too, she never said, I want to contribute just for the girls. She just said, I want to help. And, I, you know, we kind of slipped her that role and said, hey, you can be the lead trainer for the girls but you can also have all the guys too. It's one of those things that if you know her, she's like has the most pure heart out of anyone that I've ever met in my life. And it's, it's crazy that 
she's been involved in the entertainment industry as long as she's did because those are kind of like the most heartless people on the planet. But her thing was she had zero interest in helping uh, like the wrestling business. She had zero interest in helping you know someone become a wrestler. Her interest truly was I would love to help someone achieve their dream. That was it. And she was, if someone's dream is to be a wrestler, I want to help them achieve their dream. Like that's what a good-hearted person she is. That's why she's involved. Because he says, man, if I see someone out there and they said, this is my dream, I want their dream to come true. Like, I think that I'm a pretty good person. I try to be a better person every day. I feel like a, like a scumbag around Molly Holly. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> and, and not because I used to make you feel that way. She is just literally the nicest person, nicest human being you'll ever meet. 